As Ukraine's explosive drone boats began to run down and sink or damage more Russian warships on the Black Sea, the Russian fleet fought back from the air, sea, and land. Most notably, the Russian helicopters, such as the Ka-29 twin-rotor helicopter and the Mi-8 Navy transport helicopter, patrolled the Black Sea Fleet's surrounding area looking for approaching drones and opening fire with rockets and guns, eventually destroying a couple of them. So now, the Ukrainian drone boats have started upgrading to fight fire with fire, using the same Russian R-73 heat-seeking missiles mounted on top of the drones. Not to forget, inside this missile is technology from the 1970s, like the Heat Seeker, which is sensitive, cryogenically cooled. It is even more maneuverable and capable than the American AIM-9M Sidewinder in terms of tracking and seeker acquisition all in the videos ahead, so stay tuned and don't miss a beat. This is the Ukrainian USV, also known as the Magura Sea Drone. As stated, this has been upgraded with twin rams located on each side, armed with an infrared-guided Soviet-era R-73 Archer. It's a short-range air-to-air missile, also used by Russia, Ukraine, India, China, Egypt, Indonesia, and 20 other countries. According to reports, the Russian account claims that the heat-seeking missile was launched to destroy this helicopter, but it was unsuccessful to bring it down, which we will talk in detail why it failed later in the video. The Mi-8 helicopter took evasive maneuvers and chased the sea drone while firing its ZGU-1. This is a 14.5 millimeter heavy anti-aircraft machine gun that can spit out 600 rounds per minute at an effective range of 3,000 meters. Additionally, this helicopter can carry unguided rocket pods on each side, making it one of the most well-equipped transport helicopter, as well as an airborne command post and armed gunship. Let's take a quick and short history lesson. The Mi-8 is the world's most produced helicopter, with over 17,000 units, used by over 50 countries including Ukraine, India, and interestingly, the United States also has Mi-8's helicopters that were extensively used by the CIA and U.S. Special Forces in Afghanistan. In another incident, we find sea drones under attack from a Russian Navy Ka-29 Helix B assault helicopter. The Cam of Ka-29 helicopter is circling and chasing a Ukrainian unmanned surface vehicle, either a 19-foot Sea Baby or a slightly smaller Magura Sea Drone. Due to the constant attacks from fighter jets and helicopters, it began upgrading the heat-seeking missiles, such as the R-73. Let's take a quick look at these Soviet-era missiles that still pack a punch. They are divided into several parts. Here is the Seeker section, inside of which is the IR Seeker, or in full form, the Infrared Seeker. Moving to the back is the Canard Control section, equipped with movable fins or canards. Just behind it are the Guidance Control and Fuse sections. This is the warhead that weighs 16 pounds, which translates to around 7.4 kilograms. This section is the solid fuel that helps thrust the missile, which also includes a motor section upgraded with individual nozzles. And finally, we have the Thrust Vector Control section, sandwiched between four wings and a movable roll tab. If you want to take an overall view, this is what it looks like with all the different parts level in each individual sections. As stated, the drones are being chased by this Kamov coaxial rotor arrangement. This configuration eliminates the need for a tail rotor, providing distinct advantages. For instance, these coaxial rotors can achieve a higher hover ceiling compared to single rotor helicopters. Additionally, they allow for a reduction in overall rotor diameter for a given vehicle gross weight, enabling them to transport around 12 fully armed troops. Moreover, the helicopter can also carry the R-73 Archer missiles, positioned on each side. Furthermore, it boasts a 30mm autocannon, which can be mounted on the left side of the hull. Though this feature is only available on a limited number of Ka-29's Navy helicopters. Finally, they are also equipped with a flexibly mounted 7.62mm gas-powered four-barrel minigun. This can be found at the front of the helicopter. It can fire at a rate of 6,000 rounds per minute. Let's take a look at why this R-73 missile failed to hit this helicopter. In reality, though, everything depends on the homing hen's ability to lock on the target. The only apparent drawback the R-73 has is the dead zone of 200 or 300 meters around it which is the minimum range required for a successful hit. 
In the case of a launch from a drone, the minimum operational range is even larger due to the blind spot directly above the launcher, because the ladder is fixed firmly to the platform. In other words, you have to give it to this Russian pilot, as he knows he is in danger if and when the missile is pointed directly at him, he knows the homing head can be locked and track the heat signature of the missiles. This is why he adopted this strategy and followed the sea drone from the back, not allowing to the USV take a frontal hit. Let's take a look at how he took out the drone. After carefully chasing the sea drone, he fired a mounted machine gun at the drone or this big 30mm auto cannon to disable the unmanned sea craft. They did quite a chase as the Ukrainian drone moved in a zigzag manner as shown in this animations. But the final nail to the coffin is the Gatlin gun located at the front of the cockpit. The co-pilot or gunner aims manually and finally disables the sea drone, which finally stops at the middle of the Black Sea. A couple of rounds from a mounted machine gun finally created a huge explosion as the missile bursts into flames. But the Ukrainian sea drone did see some actions in one incident. A USV was traveling at high speed and dodged enemy fire in the Black Seas in search for targets. Finally, they find the latest Russian high-speed boat called the Raptor. This patrol boat accommodates two crew and 22 personnel members. It has a maximum length of 17 meters, a maximum width of 4 meters, a fixed height of 3.5 meters, and a depth of 0.9 meter. The boat is fitted with a remotely operated weapon station to hold a 14.5 millimeter machine gun, as well as a gyro stabilized electro optical module. The gun has a firing range of 2,000 meters and is used for defense against weapon systems and armored targets. Two bracket mounts are fitted at the stern to carry two Gatlin gun on each sides of the boat. But these sea drones can also be launched as a wolf pack, as these are suicide drones and 1,000 times cheaper than the high-value targets mainly ships. Here's the catch, if only a few drones make it through all the defense mechanism and gunfire, it can still pack a punch converting it into a successful mission if it manages to sink or damage only one ship in this harbor. The strike hit multiple vessels, including at least one high-valuable target, a frigate, and several other ships. The landing warship named Caesar Kunikov was struck by the Ukrainian naval drone Magura V-5, also called Sea Drones, off the annexed Crimean Peninsula near Yalta. Originally designed for beach landings, it boasts the capacity to carry up to 450 tons of cargo. Featuring both bow and stern doors, they facilitate the seamless loading and unloading of vehicles. This extensive space enables the embarkation of up to 25 armored personnel carriers. When the target is in sight, the sea drones roar to life, racing toward the target and striking the side of the ship. The fuse activates the switch, triggering a piece of Soviet-era tech. The ship charge explosive payload strikes and damage the ammunition storage, generating five loud bangs that reverberate across the seas. I believe these drones are well-suited for stationary targets, such as this Crimea Bridge. Here you can see two sea drums in the dead of night started traveling towards this structure. Instead of hitting the intended rail crossing bridge, two of the drones mistakenly took the target pillars of the road bridge and collides with it, missing the rail bridge by a few meters. The collision creates a resounding impact, leaving behind a noticeable dent and a brief disruption in transportation. Let's take a look at how this works. Step 1. The hatch cracks open and rushes water from the depths, but that's not all. This water takes a well-designed route, flowing in from the bottom and skillfully channeled out through the back. Step 2. As the naval drone takes its first steps, Starlink kicks in, providing vital guidance to the operators. Step 3. These cutting-edge naval drones don't travel solo. A typical operation involves a squadron of six to seven naval drones working in unison. Step 4 where the operator takes the reins. Guiding the drone is no easy task, and it's all done through video feeds. The operator becomes the drone's eyes and ears, making sure it stays on course. When the target is in sight, it's time to kick things into high gear. The operator pushes the throttle to the max, laser-focused on the colossal objective. Step 5. Imagine the drone striking the ship's hull to pinpoint accuracy. The fuse activates the switch, triggering a piece of Soviet-era tech a bomb designed to pack a punch. This explosive payload is set to damage this Russian intelligence ship worth $675 million. We make original videos from scratch, so please do subscribe and hit the notification bell for more videos.